All right. Good morning, everybody. It is 10 a.m. out here on the West Coast. Um, thank you all for joining us uh, today. My name is Matt Baum. I am the Director of Talent Solutions here at After College. And we're going to be doing a webinar today, the topic of which is, uh, it comes from our University Recruiting Essentials series. It's your 30-minute guide to on-campus events. And uh, since we only have 30 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. Um, first off, when I get to the first slide, all right. Uh, I want to give you guys kind of an overview of on-campus events uh, and what that entails. We're, we're going to explore how on-campus events can be valuable to your company. <clears throat> I want to give an example of how uh, a company like NetApp recruits through on-campus events, um, some of the different types of events that employers can participate in, uh, and most importantly, how your company can get started with on-campus events. So, first and foremost, why do you do on-campus events? Um, yeah, I think the most important thing is branding, and, and everything that we do revolves around branding. But I'm going to give you some data to back that assertion up. Uh, there were some employers that were surveyed in the National Association of Colleges and Employers Recruiting Benchmark Survey. Um, you guys are probably familiar with NACE. Uh, you may have even seen the, the Recruiting Benchmark Survey that they do every year. Um, it is specific to college recruiting. Uh, and employers rated relationships with faculty as the most effective way to brand their campus recruiting program. Career fairs, which is also an on-campus event, uh, was rated number two. The third was supporting student organizations. And oftentimes, a big part of supporting a student organization is participating in that organization's on-campus events. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. The top three ways to engage with uh, uh, to engage your brand uh, with faculty uh, are to be on campus. It always comes back to being on campus. Uh, that is the best way. It's not the only way, but it tends to be the best way. Uh, so here's the main thing I want you to remember from this presentation: career fairs and university recruiting are all about your brand and attracting top students to your brand. How do you get them interested? How do you build affinity for your brand? Um, you know, hiring an intern, making a, a full-time college, uh, you know, new grad hire, those are the results of that effort, but not the primary goal. The primary goal, everything you do to decide whether or not you're going to attend should be related to building your awareness, your brand awareness with students. So, um, you know, even if you don't have any open jobs, you still need to have a consistent presence on campus. Building relationships, keeping your brand in front of those you want to attract in the future, that's the key. Uh, we've seen a lot of economic downturns where companies will just pull out, they'll stop investing in on-campus recruiting, uh, and then what happens? You have to completely rebuild from scratch when it comes time to hire again. Uh, and you know, we all know baby boomers are retiring. That was kind of delayed by the economy, uh, but they are retiring and companies need to build their talent pipelines. It is really essential to stay on campus and have that presence. Um, so, you know, let's talk a little bit about uh, After College did a snapshot survey to gauge how student job seekers in this entry level category, uh, including students, recent grads, and alumni, uh, undertake the job search process. Uh, the primary goal of the survey, which is now in its fifth year, was to track and analyze current job search trends, get an accurate depiction of how entry level job seekers look for employment, and to chart the most useful and popular job search channels and compare them to those of previous years. What we found is that students care about on-campus events. Uh, you know, according to those survey results, students rank career fairs as the third most effective way of finding jobs and internships when they're searching. Uh, that's just behind searching online job sites and visiting employers' websites. Uh, another statistic to come out of the survey, 37% of students prefer on-campus info sessions and interviews as the primary method employers should use to communicate about career opportunities. Uh, highest on the list, higher than career sections on their websites. 37%, that's the biggest chunk. Um, so from these survey results, I think we're able to, to disprove some of the most common university recruiting myths. Um, you know, the first one is uh, career fairs don't matter. They're just a big cattle call. Um, you, know, you don't really get to get to know students and they don't really get to get to know you. Um, you know, the survey, we asked students what they liked least about career fairs. The overwhelming majority, nearly two-thirds of the respondents, they said that career fairs are often so busy, it's difficult to get enough one-on-one -on -one time with recruiters. That shows that they care. That shows that they value it. 
They just want them to be better. They want them to work even better for them. But they definitely value those on-campus events. Um, you know, uh, another myth, students only engage with job search at the end of the year. Nobody's going to look for a job while they're dealing with classes and exams. It's not true. Students actually have that job search on their mind all year. And, you know, a lot of you aren't that far removed from being students. You can think about it from your own and you know, put yourself in their shoes. Uh, you know, money is always a concern. You have expenses throughout the year. It's not just, uh, you know, pay your student loan at the end, pay your tuition at the end. Oh, I got a scholarship to take care of it. Still got to feed your stuff. Still got to put a roof above your head. You still got a car payment a lot of the time, pay for gas. Money and jobs is always on the student's mind. Um, you know, we actually looked and uh, uh, you know, looked at the, the different times of year, uh, and students actually have the job search on their mind throughout the year. The survey ranked students rank all times of the year equally, with the exception of early spring semester when they're paying a little bit more attention to job search. So students tell us all year round they're looking. Uh, you know, the other thing, is students only want to work for the cool companies. Uh, this is a myth that, especially here in Silicon Valley, is pervasive. Um, you know, the definition of cool, first off, is almost impossible to pin down, but it's no secret. Companies like Google, companies like Facebook, they're always on the top ten list of the most desirable companies to work for. Um, you know, New York Times even ran an article recently about how difficult it can be to attract young talent to companies if they lack that cool factor. Yet, when we asked students what factor was the strongest influence on their decision about which companies to apply to, Coolness was not at the top of the list at all. In fact, the resounding number of the, the students that responded, 71.6% said that caring about what the company does was the most important thing to them. Uh, and that's why we're going to talk more about this, but you better make sure they understand what it is you do. Uh, and in comparison, only 9% of students said that working for a cool company was their top priority. So let me give you a real life example. Uh, I want to talk about a uh, company, NetApp, and how they recruit students and new grads through on-campus events. Uh, NetApp is a data management company. They, they say that they help enterprises of all sizes achieve a competitive edge by enabling them to innovate faster and more affordably than their competitors. Uh, now, NetApp was founded in 1992, and they consistently rank uh, near the top of Fortune's 100 best companies to work for list in corporate America. First time I heard of them, they, were, they topped the list that year. So uh, we interviewed Dawn Carter. She's the director of university relations at NetApp uh, and a real expert in this field. Uh, we talked to her about, uh, you know, we wanted to get a better understanding of how a company can excel at university recruiting it on campus. Um, you know, although your company might not have that same success or that same track record that NetApp has, uh, what Dawn Carter says is really encouraging. She says, you don't have to start from scratch. You can take your cues from the industry leaders. Um, when you create your university recruiting strategy, uh, you, know, you don't always just want to copy what the best are doing, but they, they have definitely created a blueprint. That's the good news. You, you definitely have something that you can build upon that they're already doing. Um, so let's talk about the, what their strategy is. They have a university relations team that is responsible for building the talent pipeline and hiring university graduates. graduates. Um, that's you know, BA, MA, MBA, PhD, anyone who's graduated with any of those degrees in the past 18 months. Um, that also inter includes interns and co-ops globally. Now, they have a separate industry recruiting team that handles all the other recruiting for each respective organization within the company. That's finance, that's sales, that's engineering. Um, so the university recruiting, they typically hire 250 grads and 300 to 400 interns every year. The NetApp recruiting schedule kind of varies globally, but here in the U.S., what they do, they base their activities on the academic calendar. So in the fall, they're on campus at the core schools. Uh, they build partnerships and relationships with the faculty, they attend their career fairs, they partner with the student groups, uh, and then they, they follow the academic calendar. Um, now, because they have a business-to-business -business model, their B2B company, uh, they find a lot of students don't necessarily associate them with a product. They don't necessarily know what they do or what they produce. Uh, so recently they launched what they call their Discover NetApp Days on college campuses. There's, these are events that kind of allow NetApp to interact with students through a, a day on campus where, where they can share why it's such a great place to work. Um, you know, it's really a big branded event where they kind of uh, get to take over the, the campus uh, uh, in a way. Um, now, because they participate in so many university recruiting events, it's really important that they have a schedule so that they can market their events and create awareness uh, and, and do it in a really organized fashion. Uh, they, some of the events, just, just some of the events that they do, uh, career fairs, tech talks, info sessions, virtual info sessions, diversity 
the events. Uh, the DiscoverNet app that we talked about. Uh, and then they also do even like resume reviews. There, there's all sorts of stuff that isn't even on this list. So uh, now I want to take a deep dive into some of the different types of campus events uh, that you can attend and how you can get started. But again, you've got to make sure you have a calendar, you have a schedule, and you keep it really organized. The first one that comes to mind is the info sessions. Uh, an info session usually consists of a presentation where students come, attend, they learn more about your company, teach them about, their indus about the industry that you're in, the type of work that you do. Uh, and uh, what they might do if they joined your organization. That's the important part. Uh, so this is a really great opportunity, obviously, to evangelize your brand and talk about your, co your company culture, talk about why you're a great place to work. Um, they then generally take place on campus uh, and are scheduled around career fairs or, or, or other similar career-related events. Um, and, and you, know, you, you want to schedule around the career fairs within your schedule, uh, your on-campus recruiting schedule, uh, to kind of consolidate travel budgets. Now, every school does things a bit differently, but you might be able to set up your info, se info session through a, the general career center. Um, you may have to go through a department's career center. Uh, you may have to go through a student's group. Uh, you, know, you might even have to go out and organize it on your own, completely ad hoc. So I'm going to give you an example. This is a NetApp uh, info session that was set up that's hosted by a student group. So this is Wix, Women in Computer Science. Uh, the University of Pittsburgh Computer Science Department Career Center works with the on-campus student groups to hold the info session. So a lot of moving pieces here. There's, there's a student group, there's a career center, and there's you. And this is how uh, you know, they, use, uh, they use the web to, to integrate and schedule. Uh, employers are, are going to always be responsible, though, for identifying which student groups best accomplish their university recruiting goals. That's why this is a really great chance to kind of identify some of the student groups that have a diversity component uh, and help working towards your, your diversity recruitment strategy. Um, I want to give you some notes about working with student groups, though. Student groups are often volunteer run. So that might mean there's going to be a longer lead time for response when you're trying to organize an event. Uh, you know, again, if it's run by a volunteer, if nobody's being paid to organize it, you can imagine it's going to take a little bit longer and more of the onus is on you to make sure that things get done. Um, another, another key point, uh, you know, engagement with a, a faculty advisor of that group can be a really great way to build a relationship and expand your outreach on that campus. So, you know, for example, if, they're, if you're working with the, the faculty advisor for a group like Wix, uh, they may be able to provide you with additional opportunities to present in the classroom. They may even be able to make introductions to other faculty who will bring into their classrooms. And of course, you know, the holy grail, you might even get some of these faculty uh, to tip you off and, and hand, you, uh, hand you resumes of some of the best students. Um, the other thing, uh, uh, you know, you, you, there's also these info sessions that are run through an academic department. So in this case, as an example, Baylor Business School, they have their first Wednesdays, first Wednesday of, of each month, obviously, um, where business students and employers who are interested in sharing information about their company can meet. Um, so another great company, a uh, great program, actually, that you can participate in on campus. Uh, but you need to do the research and find out what's available specifically at your target schools. Um, another thing, employer affiliate programs. Uh, a lot of schools have these, uh, usually facilitated by career centers, uh, and typically provide, they typically provide access to, to all students. Uh, so these are programs that you know, generally they have a yearly fee that the company pays. Uh, and they have different levels. Think, you know, NPR Pledge Drive. If you, if you only want to give a few bucks, you don't get the tote bag. You don't get all the goodies. You know, the more you give, the more you get. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, let me show you actually a couple of specific corporate affiliate, affiliate programs. Um, this one's Brown University School of Engineering. Uh, this is a really great way to become in integrated into that academic, academic department so you can influence curriculum. Uh, build faculty relationships, uh, get your organization's brand in front of the students of that department, and participate in the on-campus events held by that department. Um, when you choose to get involved in corporate affiliate programs, it's really important that the people who represent your company at these events are chosen wisely. You know, it helps to have professionals who speak the language of the faculty and the students. Um, you know, obviously, you guys are all recruitment experts. Uh, you might not be experts in engineering. You might not be experts in coding. You might not be experts in marine biology. <laughs> Whatever the topic is, 
it's always good to have a, an expert there who speaks the language. Um, also, this is a great place to uh, try to include upper management or include the hiring managers and get them involved in the, in the recruiting process on campus. So, you know, I always like to say, if you can bring in VPs, if you can bring in C-level executives, that's great. That only helps strengthen the message. And the other thing is, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, it only helps give you a chance to showcase your work, too, and get in front of those C-level people. So, um, you know, that's a big bonus in my book. Now, most corporate affiliate programs have an organized way for you to reach out and recruit the students. That's one of the best parts about them. Uh, this is uh, another example of University of Washington's Human-Centered Design and Engineering Corporate Affiliate Program. Uh, they offer a career fair, and they offer a Corporate Affiliates Day, uh, where students, faculty, and companies all get together and share this sort of information. So it might be wise to involve current employees who are alumni of those target schools and who are alumni of those target departments when you're planning these events. Uh, another type of event, classroom presentations. Uh, classroom presentations are another way that employers can really become engaged with the target students on that campus. If you can get into the classroom, you really have a great captive audience. Uh, now, sometimes that's done through your faculty relationships, and that's why, that's why you guys are all relationship builders. That's why you know, that is such an important part of your job. A lot of times you do this stuff through the career service department. They have an organized system. So, uh, you know, for classroom presentations, the Iowa State University College of Engineering Career Services Department, they have this organized way, this organized site, where you can request to speak in classes. And you know, conversely, faculty can ask for help finding guest employer speakers. Um, that's not going to be the case for every institution. But if this help exists on campus, it really behooves you to find out about it. It's going to make your job a lot easier. Um, the Career Center here even gives employers some tips on what's been most effective in presenting to their classrooms. So that could be really helpful as well. Um, I want to show you this. This is a great example of building your brand recognition uh, among students through an on-campus event. NetApp organized a classroom presentation, or, or what they're calling a tech talk here, with Clemson University, and they're actually on the course's schedule. So, you know, they got out, uh, uh, they basically were targeting specifically computer science students, and they had a clear plan, and when they scheduled this tech talk, they set it up early enough that they were actually put on the syllabus. So every time that student looks at their syllabus, they see NetApp there. Now, even if you have a strong consumer brand, students don't always understand what opportunities are available at your company. Uh, classroom presentations are the, one of the best places to straighten out misconceptions. Um, you know, no matter what type of on-campus event you're part participating in, do not underestimate the importance of educating about your industry. You know, in your marketing materials that you use to attract students to your events, take this into consideration. Uh, if you're a healthcare company, but you're looking to hire computer science majors because you have some big tech projects coming up, make that clear. Uh, they don't, you don't want them to dismiss your company because they only they think you're only hiring nurses or, or allied healthcare workers. Um, other thing, you want to show them real live examples. Incorporate uh, examples of what your company does into your events. Uh, do you have a really interesting product or a piece of research that you're performing? Is there a way you can present that? Uh, you know, you want to get them excited about the types of things that you might be engaged in at your company. If you have hiring managers who can attend your classroom talks. They should incorporate this stuff. Maybe do a little demo. Uh, do something for a group of students at, at a booth. Doing something for a group of students in the classroom. Do something that's memorable. Uh, that, that's really the key. Be memorable. Make sure that, that it sticks with them. Uh, that's how you get them excited about what you do. Um, now, another thing, I know I said that campus events are not about jobs. They're about your brand. I still want to cover on-campus recruiting and on-campus interviewing because uh, it is a really valuable campus event. Uh, I also believe it can help you uh, to apply some of the other principles uh, that we talked about to this practice, like marketing your on-campus recruiting schedule. Uh, so, uh, you know, the other thing, other on-campus events are often piggybacked on the on-campus recruiting schedules on college campuses. So, um, <clears throat> you know, just to back up, on-campus recruiting is where you actually go you set up your interview schedules on campus and you interview students right there where they are. So a lot of career centers, they offer the technology to hold video interviews, but most of the time the process is still done traditionally in the interview rooms, in the career center. Uh, On-campus recruiting can be really complex, 
Uh, a lot of times there's stringent, de stringent deadlines attached to, to everything that you have to do. Some career centers offer training and training guides, but uh, again, once you pick your schools to invest in, you got to make sure you understand their processes. Uh, so it's important to remember every school is different. Do your research about each school, plan ahead, engage the student, be memorable, and make them remember your company and your employment brand. Um, show you an example here from the UCLA Anderson School of Management. Uh, of an on-campus recruiting schedule. Uh, there's different types of on-campus recruiting processes uh, depending on which career center you're working with. Uh, but most of the time, the, the main type of schedule that you're going to work with is an open schedule. Students get a slot based on some basic requirement that you've set. You know, they, they meet some certain requirements and then they get to choose a slot. The other thing that you see is these kind of pre-select schedules. Pre-select schedules are awesome, but it, it's a lot more complicated. You review the applicants within a specific time frame then you select who you would be interested in interviewing and you pick some alternates then those students have a chance to sign up during this sign up period during that time frame uh, so the process it works really well it's just labor intensive and it takes a commitment from the employer to keep up with the dates uh, a lot of employers they put their on-campus events on their websites this is the example from uh, NetApp that we used earlier uh, and that includes the type of events that they're doing, the specific campuses where the event's going to take place. Uh, everything is, is outlined in detail there. This is a great thing to do as well. And, and, you know, I want to kind of start wrapping it up here and winding down, but I want to also remind you, my bullet points are not the be-all and end-all of engaging students on campus. There's lots of creative ways that you can get your brand on, get out your brand, uh, engage students, and get them thinking about you. So uh, a couple outside-the-box ideas. Uh, what I want to highlight, NetApp, again, uh, the, they do the open house. Uh, you know, uh, this is not for everybody, but if you have a really fun work culture, if you have a really nice facility, host the students on site. Uh, so NetApp actually invites students to come to their office, learn all about the company, learn all about their day-to-day -day work that happens there. Uh, they've got an office here in Sunnyvale, California with sand volleyball pits and pitching greens and outdoor cafes and an amazing workout facility. Uh, so they use these types of events to make sure that students are excited about working there and they see what, what it could be like, how awesome it could be to be a part of NetApp. Another thing is the hackathons. Uh, you know, especially those of you who recruit tech people, uh, you know about hackathons, you're probably aware of them already, but you know, just in case you're not, uh, these are usually for computer science, tech, and engineering students. Uh, and this example is the MHACS hackathon that you see here. Uh, it happens at the University of Michigan. And students from all over the world participate. They, uh, they sold 1,200 tickets last year and sold out in one day. So, uh, you know, employer sponsorship is the main way that these events get funded, uh, and that's a key branding opportunity on campus. Uh, employers who sponsor the event can have a representative attend, and there are even tech talks and info sessions that happen throughout the event. So, uh, I encourage you to look at it. Going on, there's also the virtual hackathons. Um, partner with called Hacker Rig. Um, you know, so all these sort of different things that happen on your on your target campuses, uh, these physical hackathons, these are great on-campus opportunities. So how do you start doing on-campus events? Um, you know, I think the first and most important thing that you can do is prioritize. And the simplest way to prioritize is to tier out your schools. You know, most companies, they do the three-tier system. Uh, I know I work with some clients, some of my clients, they have a two-tier system. Um, I've heard of some companies even doing a four-tier system. Three seems to be the sweet spot, uh, but, you know, just keep in mind, you can't do every event on every campus. You need to decide on your target schools, you need to break them up into those tiers, and you need to pick a, you need to kind of set a strategy for each tier. So, you know, those elite recruiters at KPMG and Google, they focus their main resources up there on that top tier. Uh, they do campus events, they do scholarships, they educate students about their brand, their company, and their opportunities. It's all branded, it's all done on campus, uh, and, and that doesn't have to be you to start, don't get me wrong, uh, but that's who you're competing against. Uh, deciding your target schools, uh, there's a number of different kind of measurements that you can utilize to figure that out. How many relevant programs they have, geography, uh, where have your current employees attended, past ROI if you, if you have that data. So, uh, you know, small companies, you might want to start with just a few schools. Companies that have more resources, 
dive right in, get that whole dream team of campuses. Um, just remember, when you're determining a strategy for your company, that you need to consistently put the time and resources into these schools for the foreseeable future if you want to reap the rewards. Choose wisely. You know, if, you, if you're not planning to invest for two, three, four years in these schools, then maybe you need to back it down, make it a little bit smaller list. So one of the last things, marketing your events. Uh, and I want to breeze through this pretty quick. You know, you need to come up with what your message is. You need to figure out who you want to reach. Uh, and you need to get the word out. A few different ways. Do you have a database of past students you've spoken with that you can, you can reach out to? Um, you know, students who applied in the past for internships. Uh, and I want, if you do have a consumer facing, facing brand, they have a bunch of Twitter followers or a Facebook page where they can uh, help put the word out. You have customers that so you can let your customers know. Once you have your message, you want to get it out in every way that you can. So, um, you know, oh, by the way, don't limit it to just the fall semester. Uh, like I said, most students and alumni, they report that they, looked for, they look to work year round. So now, since we only have 30 minutes, I can't get into how, just how you measure your ROI. That can be pretty complex. But if you want some tips, send me an email, mbaum at aftercollege.com. You can set up some time to talk. But in short, track everything you can in order to prove that you were successful. Now, if you're going to invest the time and energy to do this right, you got to make sure that you're tracking the data in year one that demonstrates that it's going to work over year two, year three, year four because you're not going to have maximum results until you get to that, that fourth year. Um, and then, you know, here's the after college plug. Yes, we can help you. you know, we market on campus events all the time. It's one of the things we do best. Uh, don't hesitate again to reach out to me or you can email talent at aftercollege.com. Uh, they'll get back to you maybe a little quicker than I would, but uh, either way, we are absolutely happy to help. And if there's anything that we can do, don't hesitate to reach out. So, okay, this slide is the most important one of the whole presentation. I work it into every single webinar I do. I mention it time and time again, but I want to remind you, on-campus events are about your brand. It is not about coming out with a few hires and calling that success. It is about driving your brand into the brains of every freshman, every sophomore, every junior, not just getting a few, uh, a few seniors to come and work for you this year. Because if you do a good job of branding yourself with those freshman, sophomore, and junior candidates, uh, then next year you're going to have even more success than you did this year and each year is going to be better than the last. Um, you know, basically invest in your brand and the intern applications and the full-time college grad hires will follow. Um, so that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you guys for attending. Here's all the contact information um, for us. Uh, our Twitter, uh, make sure that you follow us on Twitter at After College. Uh, uh, check out our employer blog, employer.aftercollege.com. Uh, and again, if you want to reach my team, talentedaftercollege.com, or you can email me directly. There's all my contact info. Um, be happy to hear from you. Um, doesn't look like we had a whole lot of questions here, uh, which is good because uh, we're pretty much out of time. Uh, but again, if you do have questions, email me directly. Uh, I'm happy to help. And uh, you know, I wish we could have covered more in 30 minutes here, but uh, we do have uh, our ongoing webinar series. Uh, so if you can just go to employer.aftercollege.com, you can start to subscribe to all of our webinars and, and make sure to register early. Um, you know, doesn't look like we got any more questions. So uh, last but not least, thank you guys so much for being here. And please don't hesitate to reach out in the future.